We are here in Edinburgh, Scotland, and we have just rented a van to explore the Scottish Highlands. Getting close to nature is something that we don't do very often and it's our first time trying this van life and we are so excited. But first up, we have to stock up for some food. Let's go. We are honestly spoiled for choices for breakfast. We have packaged bread, we have scones, and we have pancakes, and many, many flavors of pancakes. You get lost in your imperfections. You get lost in the things you want. But if you slow down for just one second, you might feel way better than you thought The drive from Edinburgh to Inverness is about 3 hours and we wanted to stop in between to get lunch but I think because we took a little too long to do our grocery shopping we had no choice but to go ahead and move directly to Inverness but once we're there, we're going to get some late lunch and then we're going to get some amazing views nearby The road has been relatively smooth There was patches of sun but overall it's a very cloudy and rainy day and if you took a second to breathe Took a minute to cry Or maybe you'd see that all this time I've been right here Maybe I know it Life can get hard, keep going I just wanna be the one you need right now Baby, would you turn and look at me right now? I can't believe we're in downtown Inverness, probably the northernmost place that I have ever been to so far and in this trip we're probably going to break records right, going more and more north each time round. I know we have lunch at 4 o'clock and it's kind of ridiculous but I've been starving all the way since and finally we're here in Inverness. We got butter chicken and basmati rice. This place looks pretty nice, sadly we only have an hour here in this city. After that, we'll head to try to spot the Loch Ness Monster at the Loch Ness <laughs> We're here at Urhart Castle, which is one of the first attractions of our trip here to the Scotland Highlands. By volume, this is the largest lake in Great Britain. And if you are looking at by surface area, this is the second largest. The largest is Loch Lomond. I really love this lake that's around me because you can see the grazing sheep that is just grazing the grass as well as the pocket of sunshine across the lake that is shining through the clouds. This has got to be one of the more scenic drives that we have ever driven on. Probably the only better one that we had was the Great Ocean Drive in Melbourne, going across to 12 Apostles. We're also weaving in and out of the forest with the lake hugging beside us almost all the time. So it's really, really picturesque. I love it. Have you got water tanks on this one? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't yeah. think you have. Just... Have you got a toilet? No. No, no. so yeah, you will need that. Right, okay. I'll let you in then. We just arrived at our campsite and it's super peaceful. We are like surrounded by mountains and I'm just like looking at other people's camper vans or caravans and I feel like I want to try the rest of the camper vans. It's our first time doing this camper van thing and I'm wondering like should we set up the kitchen first to get cooking or should we shower first? I'm thinking that we should set up and prepare for dinner first 
there's an electric point we need to learn how to set it up and then we need to learn how to set up the kitchen at the back but there's just a lot of flies coming out <laughs> consists of potatoes, onions, mushrooms, as well as ground beef. We're trying to put them all together with some sauce and pepper and I think it's a super simple meal. Shouldn't go wrong. Oh my gosh, finally. It's about 9.30 right now and finally we get to eat. The reason why we are choosing to eat here in the van instead of out there and looking at the amazing views is because of the midges. There are so many of them. While we're cooking, they were all attacking us. I can't wait to tuck in because I'm so hungry right now. After a long day of travel, I think we deserve this completely. It's actually really good. It's actually very fresh beef. Like, I know it's ground beef and it's one of the cheap beef. You can't really cook steak and we don't have the temperatures for that. Good morning. Yesterday was a good sleep. But this morning, as soon as we got out of the car, the midges were unexpectedly annoying. They are all inside. Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. Uh, good riddance. There's just a lot of them in front of us right now. Tickling our faces. It's very, very annoying. Right now, we are hiding in a camper van away from the midges trying to eat our breakfast. This is what I got from Tesco yesterday. It is a roll of scones. These are six sotana scones made with real butter and sotanas for a crumbly texture and fruity taste. Shah really loves her scones. Yesterday during the supermarket run, she was really in love of these scones and immediately went ahead to get it. At some point of time, I was a little bit shocked because I think maybe she will get the whole entire shelf of scones. For me, breakfast today consists of some oatmeal. I don't typically eat oatmeal, but like it's somehow mysteriously appeared in my backpack. As soon as we decided to leave the campsite, the midges are gone. Like that is how they're so smart, I guess. I think it's just that few hours, those few hours in the morning where it's very cold and wet, and all the midges are out. So hopefully when we get to the lakes later, there wouldn't be a lot of beaches. So we just crossed that bridge to the Isle of Skye and now we are at this town called Broadford. And then later on we'll be going to that ferry pools right here. And then finally making a loop all the way up and around before ending at Portree. But first, pump some petrol. Okay, it's starting. How much do you think it will be? I think about 40 pounds. 650. All good. Yep, all good. We are at our first stop at the Isle of Sky, which is the ferry pools. It's about a 45 minutes hike there and then another 45 minutes back. The clouds are super dramatic because it obscures the peak of the mountains right in front of us. And then we are passing this windy zigzag road that leads us down the valley first and then after that up to where supposedly the waterfalls are. It's quite enchanting when we saw the pictures online. That's why we are here. skirting around the side of the waterfall and it looks absolutely spectacular like something that I've never actually seen 
before we were constantly stopping and taking pictures and soaking into the view it is just beautiful this is like supposed to take us 45 minutes to get up but i think we're only halfway through just because of how many photos we were taking we had some snack for lunch and now we are heading to Talisco Bay there is a beach there and there is a waterfall and there's also a stack there We have to walk about a mile to the beach where we parked was like way up there and there's no true road to the beach because the area between the parking zone and the beach is a private property but the views are stunning I can already see the beach from afar, coming to get there. I think this is the perfect place to have a house, you know. Those houses there are just incredible because you are not just by the sea, you're also by this very hilly area. I love the best of both worlds. Such smart lock mechanisms. <laughs> never ever seen the beach with the mountains and also a bunch of goats just laying around on the grass chilling by the beach what in the world is this i do not know what the beach is made of because from here all i see are stones and rocks Hey, are you a goat or a sheep? <laughs> I think he said goat. <laughs> so the next place that we are going to is this place called the Oyster Shed and apparently it sells pretty good oysters. I thought we were going to eat it already. <laughs> I guess we are waiting for our fish. That's us, one treat it. Thank you very much, son. Enjoy. Thank you. It's so huge. Yeah. Everything is so big. He was just shucking oysters out and they're all so big. Now, the moment of truth. Ready? Cheers. Probably the best oyster I've ever had. It's like... Fresh, salty, lemony, everything you want for a perfect oyster. This is such a tasty meal, I love it. Maybe it's because we didn't eat lunch, but this is so good. <laughs> Char, today we have been traveling for the whole entire day. What do you think of Isle of Sky so far? I feel like the day is too short. Even though it's a summer, I feel like we haven't had enough time to explore more of it. But I'm so glad that we have two days here. Tomorrow we are still going to explore more of the Isle of Sky. We are just only covering a section of Isle of Sky. We, we wouldn't have the ability to travel through all the roads within Isle of Sky. But like, where we went today so far, has been nothing short of amazing the small roads were a little stressful especially where it was one road for two ways there are some passing areas where if there's an incoming car then the one that is nearer the extra gap has to go there and wait for the incoming car to pass before going over sometimes there are bends and sometimes there are slopes so you can't really see the car in front but everyone is just very friendly and they will like stop and thank you for like letting them pass so it was for a pretty good experience now we are going to pottery which is where we are going to explore the town and that's also the location of our campsite. We're finally here at the campsite and it is pretty amazing because this campsite has no measures compared to the one yesterday. 
We're in company with a lot of caravans and camper vans and vans that are probably bigger than us, vans that tow. This is quite cool. We are going to set up camp here and get ready to make some food. The dinner tonight is going to be amazing. We are cooking gong pao ji ding, which is like diced chicken with like some pre-made spice. This spice. But we don't have chili peppers and we don't have peanuts, so we're going to substitute it with some beans on the side. <laughs> I'm so hungry, I can't wait for the food to be cooked. I'm going to try Aaron's food. I hope it's good, huh? <laughs> Don't blame me if you fall sick with stomach ache tomorrow. On the way into our campsite, we saw someone barbecuing and I was so jealous. But honestly, having freshly cooked meal which is hot and hearty is already way better than eating granola bars 5 days straight. Finally, finally, finally. Our meal is on the table and we are finally ready to eat. On today's menu, we have Kong Pao chicken, some delicious beans and then we have noodles which the sauce is underneath but it's gonna look so good afterwards. Let's tuck in. I'm so hungry. Hello guys. Day 3 of our camper van experience. We're super excited today. It's a beautiful sunny morning where we woke up early and hopefully we can catch more attractions around our sky. For breakfast, we are going to have avos and cheese and scones and also strawberries. Uh, it's a bit of a mixture of whatever we have left. <laughs> but since the weather is pretty nice today, we are going to eat outside. I'm going to try this. It's the same scones that we had yesterday. Let's go get some water. After Aaron refilled the water, I went to throw the trash that was in our kitchen. Then both of us cleaned the windshield and now we are ready to head off to our first destination. It's only 8am right now and we are here making our first hike of the day. It's freezing. If this is what normal temperature is every single day during the summer this is really really rough maybe we could go in front of you if we need some entertainment but we don't have to hurry because our conversations always entertain me and if you just want me to listen I The views are just amazing. On one side you can see the lake and the other side you can see the stars. The next part of the climb will be the more challenging one because we have to walk all the way up there. It looks like the incline is 45 degrees. I might have to crawl up. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking some of my leftover morning coffee for some energy boost before we head up. the top. It's been 45 minutes and we are nowhere near the top. I think the map was made by Scottish people with long legs. My legs are a little bit wobbly walking up this like flight of steps. This is like me being untrained for quite some time already but finally we're getting up to the summit which is not far away. Maybe about like five more minutes.
This has amazing views. We can see the road from here, we can see the lake, and we can see all the stores. It took us about 1 hour and 10 minutes, 30 minutes longer than what we expected. I love how the views are so dramatic. This is one of the more easy hikes that we have been on to, but it's nonetheless still equally tiring. So we are back, finally, back to the car park and back into our car and also enjoying a little bit of the warmth because it's way too cold outside. I think it was generally one of the more distinctive hikes of Isle of Sky, I would say. Like you can literally see this landmark uh, when you're driving into Portree and it's really beautiful. Next up, we are going to do something simpler at Kilt's Rock. Yes, let's go. Is anyone feeling the same way as I do? The clouds look crazy insane. It's like circling itself like a spiral. I'm sure there's a scientific name for it, <laughs> but not that something we know. So we just arrived at our next destination. This place is called Kilt Rock. And Kilt Rock is where on the side of the cliff you can see a waterfall. But because we're on the cliff, we can't see the best view of the waterfall. It's kind of like the same situation where you get to Niagara Falls and if you're on the US side, you can't really see a good view of the waterfalls. But then when you are at the Canadian side, you can have a better view of the waterfalls. So this is the same perspective. We just went down to look at the rock formations and also the waterfall. It's super beautiful but it's so cold and it started drizzling. So we spent like 5 minutes and now we're back in the car <laughs> trying to get some warmth. Even with me wearing 4 layers of jacket today, it's super windy. We are here at the northernmost point we've ever been to in our entire lives. This place is called Kimalak Bay and it's super windy and I can smell the sea from here. This will probably be the northernmost point we'll be in for a good while. There's nothing much to do here, we just wanted to set foot and enjoy the view before continuing on our road trip. We've just arrived at the parking of Ferry Glen. We're going to walk towards the Ferry Glen itself. From pictures we've looked online, it is a bunch of stones that are arranged in a certain way. Kind of like a mini stone edge. Except that like the stones on the concentric circles have been moved around so it doesn't look like a solar system kind of like concentric circle anymore but you can still see the imprint. It started to drizzle a little bit, but like the amazing view at the back has marveled me. I never really expected Fairy Glen to be this pretty because I have no idea of what exactly to expect in the first place. But coming here suddenly, like I felt like, wow, the nature has just unfolded itself. From the small little mole hills all the way to that like really cool looking castle-like um, sculpture. And then after it unravels itself to the beautiful landscape where you can see like, at least two waterfalls in the background. It's just quite magical. I think this is why they call it Fairy Glens because it is pretty pristine of an environment. It's almost as if fairies were land here in the past. We had our second and last day at Isle of Skye. 
we went to quite a few places. I think the highlight of today was the Old Man of Store. I think the highlight for me was to get towards the northernmost point for us in terms of latitude. I think that's going to stick within me for quite some time. And there's just a lot of ferry stuff that we have been to, like the ferry glen or the ferry pools. All these ferries put together, do you think that we will become ferries or do you think ferries will bless us at some point of time? The only ferries that we have around are the beaches. <laughs> prepared everything in 40 minutes because the dishes are really easy to make. We have pan fried salmon and we have stir fried vegetables and also some tomatoes on the side. And for our carbs, we have potatoes which very easy, we just boil it. <laughs> the best kind of van life exists when everybody is sharing food and talking to each other and that's the impression I always get when I'm seeing movies. I wish that there's more of a community right now because everybody is tucked inside because it's too cold kind of like lacks a little bit of spirit I would say we got three things from the minimart nearby the first is yogurt because I've been trying to get my digestive system working and then we also got this Reese's peanut butter bar a version of Reese's we've never seen before so excited to try this and the last one is something for tomorrow's lunch it's called smoked rashes smoked rashes <laughs> The whole van smells like our dinner. The sun is still out so it feels kind of weird to be heading to bed so soon. But it's actually pretty late already. We're going to shower now and then head to bed. We have just parked our van in front of this very beautiful spot and would like to show you the insides and the outside of the van that we have rented from Elba Campers. This seven-seater MPV has been converted into a camper van for two people. And let me show you inside. Welcome to the Honda Step Wagon. We are using an automatic transmission. On the driver's side, it's very, very standard with like the steering wheel, the blinkers and the wipers. But one interesting thing is that like instead of like the handbrake, it's actually a foot brake. Apart from that, what I love about this Honda is that there is a lot of compartments that you can open and put your water bottles as well as maybe a coin pouch as well as this glove compartment here where we actually put our insect repellents. There is lots of USB dongles so there's two on the outside and then two more in the glove compartment. This screen is really interesting because there is an offline dongle that connects to this screen so that you can actually view your offline maps. There are multiple places around here that doesn't really have access to internet. We use this for the first day and it looks pretty reliable. The only caveat is that it doesn't tell you like the latest updates with regards to road works or road diversions or whatsoever. So let me now show you the middle part of the camper van. So what I really love about this camper van is the fact that like you can actually sit about four people even though it's only meant for two people. This camper van comes with a table which is on the right hand side behind the driver's seat and there's three of these kind of like back cushions which double acts as your mattress when you sleep at night. This table can be easily dismantled and alongside another plank you can put it as a frame of your bed at night. All you have to do is to align the table against these ridges. There are storage spaces underneath both seats on the front as well as on the back. The front storage compartment consists of a lot of essential equipment provided by Alba campers. This includes a fire extinguisher, the wrap that goes to the front of the windows at night, insurance document, power extension, as well as a brush that allows you to clean the van if you need to. And now we're going to move on to the next section which is the kitchen at the back. So this is our kitchen. It is a very simple setup but it has everything that we need. First we have a cooking stove and it runs on a gas canister and right beside it we have a sink. This sink is a pump sink. We just have to use our hand to pump it and the water comes from a jerry can which we always refill whenever we are at a campsite. Underneath the sink we have a few of our pantry items starting with the cooler box and this is where we keep our fresh groceries such as vegetables and also meat. And then we have our dry pantry which is where we keep our dry things like our noodles and sometimes our potatoes. Right below we have a tub and this tub consists of everything that we need to cook. It includes our utensils such as our plates, our bowls, our fork, spoon and also pots and pans.
my life Living the best day of 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 my life We are here at Glencoe about to start our first trail and it goes around the lake. This lake is super beautiful. So we are standing on top of a hill and on the hill there is a reservoir. Behind the reservoir there's some woods and then behind the woods there's another mountain. I can't believe we drove more than two hours to get here from Glencoe to this place called Brecklin Falls and we saw online that there is this triangle-like bridge that looks pretty cool. looking for the A bridge but they apparently replaced this last year with another bridge which is a little bit more sustainable than the A bridge. I guess this bridge is the postmodernist version of the Brecklin Falls. Also one other thing that I want to point out is that like we stood at the same place that Queen Victoria actually stood upon about 150 years ago. Now we're going to go get some dinner. Can't understate how hungry I am. We are in a bar in the middle of the national park. This is quite crazy. Unfortunately, they ran out of pizza, so they sold us to amazing burgers, and I think it is going to be worth every dollar spent. We just had our last night in this camper van and doing it off grid was kind of weird at first but after a while it became a good sleep. Now we are going to get to Ben An Mountain. Shall we go Shar? Let's go. I think by the time we get up there to the top of the hill, it's going to be really foggy. Most likely we won't be able to see anything. The starting was a little bit too brutal for me. <laughs> the steps were like so high, were like knee level. But then right now it's like a gentle slope up. If I can see right ahead, it's going to be steep again. But I'm still going to be glad to reach a peak regardless of the view. There's something really meditative about hiking in the forest and something that I really like about is the fact that you can hear the birds chirp while climbing up and seeing this really beautiful nature. And even though my glasses fog up a little bit, or maybe it's because of the rain, I still really love it. Almost there. 20 more steps to go, we're almost there. 17, 18, 19, 20. Finally! We are here at the peak of Ben An Hill. The view, I can't say it's gorgeous. I think this got to be the most unrewarding hike because at the top of it, we can't really see anything. Well, they say it's not the destination that matters, it's the journey. And it was a pretty cooling and peaceful journey up. Sure, let's take a second, right, to kind of like imagine what is it like beyond this fog. Maybe a grassland, a lake, ship. Maybe like <laughs> sharks, sand, 
beach volleyball and a glass of martini. <laughs> you can see a glass of martini all the way up here. It took us an hour and a half to get up here. Now we're just going to head down and then get to the car and dry ourselves off. Going on a camper van life is very easy, very convenient and very mobile. And I really love the fact that you can wake up in the morning anytime you want to go on a hiking trail that is probably 5 minutes away from your car park. And this morning was a very good example of that. Where we slept was about 5 minutes away from our hiking trail. And even though there's a mist and fog and we can't really see anything, I think it's still very meditative to be up here before anyone arrives. Five days worth of van life, it's been nothing short but incredible. We've watched so many videos on YouTube about van life but trying it for ourselves is totally different and there are a lot of things that we had to get the hang of and we did get a hang of as days went by. What was unexpected for me, I think it's the number of midges. Just the sheer amount just waiting for you at dawn and dusk every single morning. Waiting <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah, true. That was quite crazy, you know? This is why we definitely need the mid spray during the summer. For me, I didn't expect the car to get dirty so quickly. Back at home, I used to sweep my room once a day. But in this car, whenever we get out for a hike and once we come back, like the car is dirty already. And whenever we cook at the back, the whole car has the smell of the food. So we have to like wind down the window and wait for the car to air out before heading to bed. Trying van life in Scotland was definitely worth it, especially with the amazing views. So driving everywhere makes it like enjoyable. And there is a pretty friendly community too because like people are always kind of looking out for each other. People are kind of subtly acknowledging the same pains and the same gains that you have too with this freedom that you have when you're traveling in a car they're kind of subtly looking out for you i feel so what's up next we are going to england which is just south of scotland we are going to visit many cities around england including manchester liverpool york and also london and if you haven't caught our last video you can check it out we visited edinburgh see you guys soon okay. take care This is quite crazy because had we been there 30 minutes later, we could probably see the entire scenery below. <music> <laughs>